I'm going to show you how to create the perfect lap joint time after time using a router. Oh, and uh, a little bit of timber, just like this. A lap joint is sometimes called a half lap joint and that's because half of the timber here has been taken away on both ends here. So when they come together, they form this perfectly flush joint. Now, of course, here's one I prepared earlier, just like Blue Peter, but um, this one is actually called a corner half lap joint or corner lap joint, which is obviously creating a corner. What you can also do is have a cross lap joint and you can also have a T lap joint. I'm going to be using this router and particularly this flat edge on the base here. Now, if you've got a router similar to this, but it's only got a circular base, that should be okay as long as the distance from any edge of the circle to the cutter is exactly the same. And you might need to just check that with a centering tool. It doesn't matter what size cutter you use. I wouldn't go too small because it would take too long to cut it out. But here, I've got a 12.7 diameter cutter and it's really important that you use the same cutter every time if you're going to make yourself a spacer to make these lap joints. And the way I got the measurement for this spacer is by measuring the distance between the edge of the cutter here to the edge of the piece of timber that I want to make a lap joint out of. So if I put this along the edge of that base, and then this to the edge of the cutter, what you will notice is that that, if I get it just in the right position, that that is completely flush and exactly the same distance from here to here. I like to use a steel rule when I'm doing this kind of measurements. So we just put that on the base, put the timber up against there, up against the cutter, and then we can just measure what that distance is. The next thing we need to do is set the depth of the router bit and to do that I need to find exactly the middle of the piece of timber that I'm going to be using. So what I'll do is take a square. Now you can either use a marking tool which I do like to use um, or a pencil, a very very sharp pencil. So all I'm going to do here is quite simply just mark two lines on the edge of that timber like so. And then what we'll do is just take our ruler, our straight edge, and we'll just make a cross between those two lines. You can see it's very sharp, this pencil, so it is creating a very fine point. If you're using a pencil that's quite blunt and rounded, you might want to go and sharpen it. So there we go. You can clearly see now where the center of this bit of timber is. I've just marked it again a little bit more just to make it clearer. From there, we can go ahead and adjust the depth of the router. So we just undo the clasp here and using this kind of router, is really easy for setting up this kind of thing, as you can see. So we'll get the bottom of the blade right on the center of that bit of timber, like that, perfect. We'll do the clasp up and we should be ready to go. We'll start off then by creating a corner lap joint. So what we need to do is take our spacer, our block, which we've created, and we need to get that completely flush to the end of the piece of timber that we're putting the lap joint on. Now, what you could do is use another piece of timber on the edge here, allowing you to get that in exactly the right spot so it's completely flush on that face there. So once you've got that in position, this is where I like to use a square because this serves as two purposes or serves two purposes. 
One, it's gonna make sure that this is completely square here, but also I can use it as a guide for the router to run along. So what I'm going to do is just grab a couple of clamps and I've let go now. So I'll just double check that that again is in the right position. So that feels really good. And then I'll just put that under there to support the square, put that up against this piece here. I'm gonna grab another bit to put on top. Make sure you've got plenty of bits of timber. And then what we'll do is clamp the square onto the bit of timber. We're putting the lap joint on and also to the bench. Double check in that everything's square, everything's tight, and we're good to go. So we can take away the spacer and we can start doing the routing. And you can see there's a couple of marks in it, but I'm not too worried and we'll talk about that in just a moment. What I want to do is just clean up this edge here. Now it hasn't really split the timber here. That's, you know, that just breaks off like so, really nice. But what you could do as you're running the router through is have another piece behind it. So as you go through, it doesn't break it out. So we'll just clean that edge up there. get our other piece that was already done and then they come together like so look at that completely flush turn it over completely flush all the way round. absolutely lovely looking lap joint so that's your corner lap joint what if we want to make a T-lap joint? We've already done one part of it. We just need to do the other part on this piece here. So once you know where your joint is going to be, and let's just say that that's part of it right there. I'm going to put my piece of timber on there, just like that, mark it. Just double check it with the square, but that looks pretty good because I've already squared that one off. So that is where I need to put my lap joint. Now we will need to spin this round in order to achieve two very square straight lines here. So we'll start off on one side and I wanna line up this spacer with this side of the line or the area that's going to have the joint and then we just do exactly the same with the square again just using that to support the square do double check that your square is right up against your piece of timber that's going to be really important don't want that moving at all so that's nice and square that's up to the square as well right on that line so that's perfect and what that's going to do is give us this line right here
Once we've got that through, and that is a little bit tricky because we can't take a bit away at a time. We just have to make one straight pass through there. But what we now do to turn it round, I just want to clean that very slightly. And then we line our spacer up with this edge that we've just cut. Move the square up and clamp it. So now we've got this line, I can just take away a bit at a time here. That's a little bit much going through at once. You could do it half way all the way through, but that means kind of setting it up twice. So uh, entirely up to you, just be safe. What it is really important to do though, is to make sure that you work from one side across. You can't just take bits and pieces out here and there, because what you might end up doing, particularly if this becomes quite a large area that you're taking out, you might not have enough room for the base of the router to sit on and therefore it might drop. So uh, just be aware of moving across the timber where you haven't taken any away yet. So let's give that a little clean up and me. <laughs> oh yes, look at that. That is lovely. Superb. And that gives you a really strong joint that really does resist any sheer force. The last one to do then is the cross half lap joint. So you know what I need to do. I just need to do another one of those. And once again, here is one I made earlier. So we'll pop that there. Oh, that's nice and smooth that is. We got one there, one there and Hopefully, oh, look at that. Absolutely perfect. So just to recap, you've got your cross half lap joint, you've got your T half lap joint, and you've also got your corner half lap joint. And once you've created your spacer, then it really does take no time at all to start creating all these lap joints and you can build a frame and all sorts in no time. Well, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video helpful. And until next time, happy woodworking. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs>